Do you want to learn what to put on your author website homepage? Then keep on watching! Hi guys, I'm so happy to be back here again with you. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sylvia Radkova and today I'm gonna walk you through my author website and I'll show you what to put on your homepage and how to structure your homepage to hook your visitors from the first second. And also be sure to stay until the end of this video because I will share with you how to download my blueprint where I've put together the 10 steps you need to create your awesome author website. But before we dive into the nitty-gritty details of creating your author website, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified every time I upload a new video and I'll do this every single week. Now let's talk first about why do you need an author website and why do you need a website at all? The answer to this question is very simple because your website is your business card. No matter whether you're just a writer and just writing your novel or you have some sort of side hustle or business that you want to promote, the website is the best place to show to the world what you do. You can use and you have to use social media, but unlike social media, your website is yours and you can structure it the way you like and you can put things that you want to put there. What I mean? Let's uh, say, for example, Twitter. On Twitter you have only 280 symbols to tell people what you want. On Instagram you have to share some sort of graphic or a photo and you cannot post only text. Facebook, Tumblr, every social platform has its own structure and has its own rules about the content that you can put there. On the other hand, on your website, you can put whatever you want. So if you want to put only text, you can put only text. If you, if you want to have only photos, you can have only photos. And you can structure everything the way you want it to be. Now the question is, what exactly to put on your website and how to structure your homepage so that you can hook your visitors from the first second. Because you have only a few seconds to hook your visitors before they leave your website and go somewhere else. And you don't want this, right? So let's go to my website and I'll show you how I structured my homepage and why I did so. So this is the home page of my website and the first thing you see here is my logo and the slogan as well as the menu where you can access the different parts of the website. Immediately next below them is the so-called header image. This is the place where you can show your website visitors who you are and what you are doing. As you can see on my page it says mystery and crime writer, my name and writing productivity and business tips for writers. This is what visitors of this site can find here, writing productivity and business tips for writers. You can change this part here with an opt-in form for people to subscribe to your newsletter or to promote your latest book, course or service. The next section that is right below the header is the place where you can showcase your work. You can use it to share the links to your YouTube channel, blog or podcast as I did. Or if you have a book but you want to leave the header clean from promotions, this is the place to put a promo of your book. In other words, the section just below the header 
So this is the header and this is the section just below the header is to inform your readers what they can find on your website and what you actually do. On a corporate website, for example, this is the place where people can find information for the products and services of this particular firm. It's good also to have a blog on your website. Blogs attract more traffic to your website, which means more visitors and more potential readers or clients if you offer some sort of writerly services or products. Here you can choose from different styles and looks. For this section I chose this one, which I like very much because you can see the featured image of the blog post, you can see the title of the blog post and you have the read more button where people who want to read more can click on it and it will send them to the blog post. I personally prefer to use the three column layout showing the three latest blog posts. Some writers share a specific post or video here, but it's really a matter of preference. And just below the latest blog posts is the place for another opt-in form. Nowadays, with constant changes to the different algorithms of the different social platforms, it's crucial to start building your email list as soon as possible. And this is something I talked about in one of my podcast episodes, which I will link in the cards and in the description box below if you want to watch after this video. So just after you showed your website visitors what you do and what articles you have on your blog in the previous two sections, it's time to ask them to subscribe to your email newsletter. Below the opt-in form is the section that is called About Me section. I've seen this section situated in different places. Sometimes it's right after the header, sometimes it's below the section with the services and products. I personally prefer to leave it at the end of my homepage and just below the opt-in form because when a visitor comes to your website, he or she first sees who you are, what you do, uh, they can read your blog posts and if they like what they see, they can subscribe to your newsletter. But if they need a little more information about you, it's just right below the opt-in form so they can read who you are and if they want, you see, they can still subscribe to your newsletter. And finally, because I'm still working on my debit novel, I don't have anything to put at the beginning of my homepage as a book that people can buy and read. That's why I chose the end of my homepage to show what I'm working on and to share my writing plans. If you're like me and you don't have a book to sell, you can skip this section, but I will recommend to at least say a word or two about your current work in progress. After all, <laughs> this is your author website, so it's good people to know what are your future plans. The footer section of your website is the place to share any additional information. It's important to put here links to your privacy and cookie policy. You can add additional menu as you can see here so people who are at the bottom of your page can jump to your blog your podcast and also it's very important to put links to your social profiles and things like that the home page that i showed you is just the face of your author website it's the place to showcase the best of the best it has to be relatively short, so you cannot put much information here. 
That's why it's wise to have some other pages where you can share more information about you, your work and what you do. I still need to do this one, but you have to have an about me page and it has to have much more information than you gave about yourself on the home page. So it has to be longer than this part here. You also may have a contact page and a press kit page, especially if you're a published author. One page you absolutely have to have is a blog page where people can find all your blog posts. If you have a podcast or a YouTube channel, you can also add them to the menu. So for my podcast, I have a separate page similar to my blog posts page where I share the episodes of my podcast. And for my YouTube channel, I just put a link to the YouTube channel because I don't want to upload all the videos on my website. If you are a published author, you also must have a page for your books where to put information for all your books. And there are other pages that you may have, but these that I mentioned are a must. Of course, you have to take into account the stage you're at in your writing career. If you're just starting, you don't need a press kit page and instead of books page, you can have a work in progress or future releases page where you can share what are you currently working on. So the home page of your website is only one of the pages that you must have. It's the place where you have to show the best of the best. It has to be relatively short so people can scroll through it relatively easy. That's why you cannot put many things on your homepage. So you need other pages to share more information about you and what you do. So if you want to build your own author website but you don't know where to start from, I've put together the exact steps you have to follow to create your own awesome author website. And if you subscribe to my weekly newsletter as a thank you gift, I will send you this blueprint for free. The link is in the description box below. You can check it out and subscribe. Tune in next week when I'll teach you how to use branding to create a consistent look and feel of your author website. And if you don't want to miss this video, subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I upload it. I'll see you next week. Bye!